The broker is still obligated to maintain confidentiality with both parties, but would be unable to honor the duty of disclosure. The broker's loyalty would be limited since they would be obligated to be equally loyal to both sides of the transaction. The principals must understand that they will need to put forth additional effort to ensure that their interests are protected. A limited broker is unable to protect a client's interest in the same manner as a single broker or a broker who only represents one party. The duty of honesty must be maintained. However, as we mentioned, the broker will be unable to disclose some information between the parties. Once both parties fully understand the ramifications of limited agency, they must consent to the agency relationship. This consent must be done in writing, usually on the same form which explains the details and ramifications of limited agency. Once both parties have given their informed consent to limited agency and therefore limited representation, the broker may proceed to represent both parties. Some purchase contracts include a space for the buyer or seller to acknowledge the representation applicable to the transaction. If one broker is acting as a dual or limited agent, this would be disclosed in the representation part of the purchase contract. Some licensees incorrectly assume that if the limited agency is disclosed in the purchase contract, the principles to the transaction acknowledge the disclosure. The requirements for establishing limited agency have been met. This is not the case. Limited agency may only be established after informed consent by both parties. Informed consent must take place in a separate document before the limited agency relationship is established. Not only does a purchase contract disclosure not meet the information requirements, but it comes too late in the transaction. If the client is not completely comfortable with the implications of a limited agency relationship, alternative representation must be sought and obtained. This is another situation where the traditional compensation model for the real estate industry causes a conflict of interest for the licensee. We will use our listing broker example again. Assume the listing calls for a 6% commission. The listing broker offers 3% commission to any broker who brings a ready, willing, and able buyer. The listing broker will retain the remaining 3% commission. If the listing broker represents both the buyer and the seller, they are entitled to 6% commission instead of 3% they would receive if they had just represented the seller. In other words, the broker compensation doubles under a limited agency situation. The dramatic increase in compensation may tempt brokers to attempt to persuade their clients to consent to limited agency. Brokers must place the interests of their clients before their own. Limited agency may not be in the best interest of either the buyer or the seller. Balancing the interest of both parties in a limited agency situation can also be extremely difficult and often not worth the additional compensation. Brokers and agents must understand the ramifications of limited agency and only enter into such relationships with caution and concern for their client's interest. Client versus Customer In Agency 2, we discussed in detail the duties an agent has to the client, or the principal. However, agents also have a duty to their customers. In this section, we will define a customer. In the next few sections, we will discuss the duties owed to a customer. A customer is a party with whom an agent works, but does not represent. Let's return again to our listing broker. If a potential buyer calls the listing broker inquiring about the details of the home, the potential buyer is a customer. No agency relationship with the caller or potential buyer has been established. The listing broker still represents the seller and only the seller. Even though the broker does not represent the caller, we will discuss which duties a broker still owes to the caller as a customer. Let's assume the caller is represented by another agent or broker. The caller presents an offer through their broker to the listing broker. 
To summarize the agency relationships, the seller is represented by the listing broker and the buyer is represented by the buyer's broker. Let's look at the relationships from the perspective of the listing broker. The listing broker is the agent of the seller, who is the principal in the relationship. The buyer is the customer of the listing broker. Now let's look at the relationships from the broker's perspective of the buyer. The buyer broker is acting as an agent of the buyer, who is the principal in the relationship. The seller is a customer of the buyer's broker.